Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook facebook.com slash radio detectives i do want to encourage you if you haven't already to pick up uh my ebook all i needed to know i learned from colombo and all i needed to know i learned from dragnet uh, these ebooks take a look at the careers and histories of seven great fictional detectives or policemen and life lessons that can be learned from them they're also available as audiobooks through audible.com or the apple store uh, and you can find all my books, audiobooks, and ebooks over at store.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Mystery is My Hobby. And this one is Sally Anders is Murdered. Mystery is My Hobby. A Mrs. Sally Anders had been found dead in the kitchen of her home in the town of Walkerville. An autopsy revealed that she died of poisoning. Fred Anders, her husband, accused of murdering his wife, had escaped capture. and For the past ten days had been a fugitive from justice. On the evening of the tenth day, I had an unexpected caller. Yes? Are you Barton Drake? Yes, I'm Drake. Will you come in? Yeah. You alone here? Yes, I'm alone. Sit over there, please. I'll talk from here. As you like. Well? Well, what? You said that you talk from here. What would you like to talk about? I guess you don't know who I am. Oh, yes, I'm quite aware of who you are. You're Fred Anders, wanted for the murder of your wife, Sally Anders. You're a cool one, Drake. I heard you were pretty clever. I give Fred Anders. What are you going to do about it? Nothing at all. As long as you keep your hand in the pocket of your jacket. <laughs> That's smart. I've got a gun in this pocket, Drake. I haven't the slightest doubt of it, Mr. Anders. I, I guess I will sit down. Fine. There's a comfortable chair. I'll sit over here where you can keep your eye on me. Yes. It's a good idea. Maybe you're wondering why I dropped in on you like this, huh? I suspect that your purpose is to tell me you didn't murder your wife. Yeah? How'd you figure that out? Didn't take a great deal of figuring, Anders. Obviously, there'd be no other reason why you'd pay me a call. Oh. Oh, that's what I call being real smart. Thank you again. Now, Drake, listen to me. I didn't do it. So help me, I didn't. The police seem to think otherwise. Oh, the police, those dumb, flat-footed cops. Come, come, Mr. Anders. The police aren't always wrong. All the evidence pointed to your case. What evidence? The fact that Sally and I had quarreled? The fact that I had threatened to kill her? Did that prove a man guilty of murder? The fact that you ran away and have been in hiding ever since your wife's death doesn't help your case any, Mr. Anders. It doesn't prove me guilty either. I'm not a fool. What would you have done? Never having killed anyone, I don't know. And I haven't killed anyone either. Thank you. You've got to help me. Oh? Now, Drake, listen to me. You don't know what it's like to be hunted and hounded, to be afraid of your own shadow, to jump every time a car backfires. No, I'm afraid I don't. I haven't slept for days, Drake. I haven't eaten. I, I can't stand it much longer. I think I'm going crazy. I think I can appreciate how you must feel. Help me, Drake. You have a reputation for shooting square. I've got money. I'll pay you. That's hardly an inducement, Mr. Anders. If you're guilty, it would be impossible for me to prove you innocent. But I'm not guilty, I tell you. Would I take a chance in coming here if I were? Would I be willing to risk everything on the one hope that you'd give me a break? No, Mr. Anders, I don't think you would. Well, then, then you believe me. Huh? For the moment, I'll withhold my opinion, and I'll give you a chance to prove your faith in me. I'll do anything. Believe me, I will. Then give yourself up to the police. Give myself up? Yes. If you know that you're innocent and you believe I can help you, there should be no objection. So that's your game. I haven't any game, Mendes. You're a fugitive from the police. Why, you dirty, double-crossing rat. So you want me to give myself up? 
You want to get credit for capturing Fred Anders by talking him into it. So that's the kind of a guy you are. Huh? Those are my terms, Anders. Take them or leave them. Take them or leave them, huh? I'll show you what I'll do to them. Put down that gun, Anders. A second murder isn't going to help you. There hasn't me. been a first yet. <laughs> But let me get this straight. This guy, Anders, came up to your apartment and tried to get you to investigate the murder of his wife. Yes, that's right, Inspector. You refused, and he took a swipe at you with his gun. Yes, and naturally, I grappled with him, and the gun went off. The bullet missed, but he knocked you out by hitting you with the gun barrel. That's right. He knocked me out, all right. Hmm. Hmm. What, Inspector? I smell something. Oh, you know what you should have done the minute you came to your senses? No, no, I don't. What, Inspector? You should have called the police and reported what had happened. After all, Anders is a fugitive from But just... I did call the police and reported what happened, Inspector. Huh? What do you mean? You said yourself that you called me the minute you woke I up. I did, Inspector. You're a policeman, aren't you? Huh? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I guess I am at that. Yeah, but look... Oh, now. oh come, come, Inspector... You'd like credit for capturing the murderer of Sally Anders, wouldn't you? Sure. You mean you know where Fred Anders is hiding? I'm not interested in where Fred Anders is hiding, Inspector. I'm only interested in apprehending the murderer of his wife. That's where we're going now. Oh, my gosh. Do you mean that Anders talked you into believing he was innocent? No, on the contrary, Inspector. I talked him into talking me into it. What kind of double talk is that? <laughs> Fred Anders, Inspector, had a chance to kill me. He didn't, even though I made him mad enough to want to. So that proves he didn't murder his wife, eh? While we were struggling for the gun, I warned Anders that a second murder wouldn't help him any. Mighty decent of you. Anders replied that there hadn't been a first yet. <laughs> you fellas didn't discuss the weather, too, did you? So you see, Inspector, I did my duty as a citizen by trying to capture a fugitive... And I discovered that the fugitive was innocent of the crime as charged. Now, that makes sense. That does. Look. And uh, now I've eased my conscience by reporting the incident to the police, and everything's fine. I knew I smelled something. Somehow or other, I always turn out to be the fall guy in these deals. <laughs> no such thing, Inspector. When we return from Walkerville, you're going to be a hero who captured the murderer of Sally Anders. <laughs> What are we stopping here for? This isn't where Fred Anders lived. I saw pictures of the place. No, this is the home of Miss Emma Bemis, Inspector. Oh, the babe who discovered the body, eh? Yes, that's right. That must be she working in that garden patch over there. Come on, let's go find out. Well, she sees us coming. Say, she's as good-looking as a picture. Yes, I see she is. Good morning. Are you Miss Emma Bemis? Oh, my goodness. You must be strangers around here. Everybody knows I'm Emma Bemis. Uh-uh, one of those. Eh? Careful, Inspector. Yes, we are strangers in Walkerville, Miss Bemis. I'm Barton Drake. This is Inspector Norden. Hi. Wonderful name. Well, what's the matter with that? And that name's been in our family for years. Look out, you're stepping right in my petunia bed. Oh, you big bunny. Now, don't get excited. I'm not stepping on you, doggone petunias. Those big feet. Now I'll have to plant the whole plot over again. Well, for God's sake, how did I know? Stand over there, Inspector. You'll be all right. Uh, I'm all right, anyhow. Of course you are. Miss Bemis, would you mind... Yes, Barton? You don't care if I call you Barton, do you? Not at all, Emma. Here we go again. It's such a lovely name. Uh, yes. <clears throat> Miss, uh, uh, Emma, Inspector Danton and I are investigating the murder of Sally Anders. Sally? Yes, it was you who discovered the body, wasn't it? Sure. I mean, yes. Say, wait a minute, are you two gentlemen officers? Well, yes, in a manner of speaking, we are. And you've come on a wild goose chase. It was Fred, Sally's husband, who murdered her. Who says so? Ebenezer Pringle says so. 
He's our chief of police. Uh, I guess I ought to know since it was I who discovered the body. Well, uh, look, lady, just because you discovered the I body... I was the most important witness at the coroner's inquest. Yeah, but... My uh, picture was in every newspaper in the country. So what? My picture's been in the newspapers, too, But they only... called me the beautiful Miss Bemis. Who lived next door? I was known as Dandy Danton, the Beau Brummel of Delancey Street. Inspector. Huh? Emma, would you mind telling us the uh, exact circumstances under which you discovered Sally Anders' body? Circumstances? Yes. There weren't any circumstances. I just went over there and found it. Oh. Well, uh, what was your reason for calling on the Anders that morning? Reason? No reason. I just decided to call on them the way neighbors do. That's no answer. Well, it should be. Sally and I had a cup of coffee together most every morning of the week. Oh, poor Sally. Why poor Sally? Why poor Sally? Yeah. Well, how would you like it if your husband was always threatening to murder you? I haven't got a husband. Oh, dear Inspector. Emma. Are we to understand that you knocked on the Anders' door? When no one answered it, you opened the door, walked in, and found Mrs. Anders lying on the floor? Oh, no. No, it wasn't like that at all. Oh? The door was locked. That's what made me suspicious. Well, I see. No one ever locks their doors in Walkerville. Naturally, I knew something was wrong. Naturally. And what did you do? Do I have to tell, Barton? I'd appreciate it if you would, Emma. Would you, Barton? Pardon me, if I'm in the way. Now, just keep uh, your big feet out of the petunias, Inspector, and everything's going to be all right. Oh, is that so? Now, as you were saying, Emma, what did you do when you found the door locked? I looked through the keyhole. Well, you little rascal. And you saw Sally Anders' body lying on the floor? Yes. It was right there in front of the door. Oh. Then what did you do? Well, I screamed, naturally. I'll bet. And I suppose uh, somebody heard you screaming and summoned Chief Pringle? That's exactly what happened. My, you're clever, Barton. Yeah, clever. <laughs> Emma, let me tell you about the time... That... All right, Inspector. Huh? Emma, thank you very much for answering all our questions. You've helped us immeasurably. Oh. Now, come on, Dandy Danton. Get your big feet out of the petunia bed. We've got work to do. Now, uh, look, Bart, mm -hmm. we can't just go in and bust into the Anders' home without a warrant. No one's living in the place, and... Inspector. Uh, yeah? What's the matter? There is someone living in the Anders' home. I just saw a movement behind those curtains. Huh? Where? I didn't see anything. You didn't? No. Perhaps I was mistaken. Mistaken? You? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Bart. You're not admitting a mistake, yes, are you? I'm sure I was mistaken. You know, my imagination's been playing tricks on me lately. Imagination, eh? Now, that's something I never expected. Come anything. along, Inspector. Let's uh, check and make sure, shall we? Yeah, yeah, that's one way of finding out. Hey, where are you going? Bump the back door. The back door? But look, the front door's right here, and it's only polite... I think we'd better try the back door first, Inspector. Oh, all right. Have it your way. Say, the place is kind of run down looking, isn't it? Yeah. It hasn't been occupied since the day of the inquest. I'll knock. Well, it looks as though you did make a mistake after all. Mm. However, let's try the door and just make sure. Ah, it's open. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything, though. Emma the Beauty just told us that no one in Walkerville ever locked their doors. Miss Bemis also pointed out that Sally Anders did lock her door on the day she was murdered. Come on, Inspector, let's look around. Uh. Deserted houses always give me the creeps. What do they keep the shades pulled down for? Shh, Inspector. What do you want me to shush for? There's no one here. You said yourself that you... <laughs> Sir! No one's oh, here, Inspector! <laughs> Inspector. 
Yeah. Yeah, it came from upstairs. Take it easy, Inspector. Uh, yeah. This may be a trap. Yeah, yeah, it might be at that. Well, the upstairs hall is deserted. I expected it would be, didn't you? Oh, sure, yeah. Whoever fired the shots must be behind one of those doors. Yeah. Well, let's try them one at a time. This one here will be number one. Were you looking for someone? Uh, 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 who the devil are you? I'm Carol Anders. Who are you, please? Who are we? Did you get that far? I couldn't very well help but get it, Inspector. Miss Anders, you must be a relative of Fred Anders. Of course. I'm his sister. Now, what is it you want? What do we want? What do you think we want with everyone yelling and shooting off yelling? guns? Shooting off guns? I don't believe I understand. Don't believe you want... Un- now, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You mean you didn't hear any shots? Of course I didn't. I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Well, I'll be a monkey. Furthermore, if you don't leave at once, I'll call the police. The police? I'm the police. Now, look. Inspector. Miss Sanders, I'm Barton Drake. This is Inspector Noah Dent. Hi. Yesterday, your brother called on me in my apartment you're and asked... You're Barton if... Drake? Yes. But I thought that... Well, you thought what? I... I'm glad to know you, Mr. Drake. Now that the formal introductions are over, I'd like to know which one of us is nuts. I heard a shot... I heard two shots. Just a minute, Inspector. Huh? Miss Anders, you can only have one purpose in being in this house. You believe your brother is innocent. Oh, I do. I know he didn't kill Sally. And you hope that if you spend some time here, you'll find something that will substantiate your belief? Yes, there must be something. There must be. Yes, there is, Miss Anders. There's a good deal. It just occurred to me what it is. Inspector, I want you to pay Chief Ebenezer Pringle a visit. Ask him to let us have a copy of the report on the autopsy that was performed on Sally Anders. But wait a minute, Bart. There was a shot. Two shots. A scream. I heard him. You heard him, too. Are you going to search the barn, Mr. Drake? Would you rather I didn't, Miss Anders? Why, I... I don't think there could possibly be anything in there. No, I, Miss Anders. I think we can skip the barn for the time being and take a look in this lean to But there's nothing in there except odds and ends of farming equipment. And trash barrels, Miss Anders. Trash barrels? Yes. Uh-oh. What in the world are you removing that for? Because I think it will help in proving who murdered your brother's wife, Miss Anders. By the way, was it raining on the day Sally Anders was found murdered? Raining? Yes. Why, I don't know. Wait a minute. No, it wasn't. We had a hard rain the day before. The day before? Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. Why? I Jove, Miss Anders, that's fine. Come along with me. Inspector Denton will be back in a moment and we'll... Oh, here comes Emma Bemis, yes, the busy body. I was hoping she wouldn't discover that I was staying here. <laughs> I know what you mean. Miss Bemis seems to be carrying something. The pie. She's forever baking them. It gives her an excuse to call on the neighbors. Oh, God! Mm-hmm. I thought you'd like... Oh. Carol Anders. Well, whoever would have thought you'd have the nerve to come back here. And why shouldn't I have the nerve to come back, Emma? Why, she asked. Well, if my brother had murdered his wife... Fred didn't murder Sally. He didn't, I tell you. And don't you dare say he did. Well, I like that. Telling me he didn't do it when I found the body. When I was chief witness at the coroner's inquest. When well, your I... picture was in every newspaper in the country. Have you... Told Mr. Drake that that picture was taken five years ago. Why, you... I suppose you... at this point it would be appropriate for me to make a noise like a cat. Meow. Now, suppose we go in the house and try one of Miss Bemis's pies. I'm sure it would taste better than... I'd rather eat poison. I can understand that. You and your brother should know all about poison, Carol Anders. Don't forget it was poison that killed Sally. You're so right. And here comes Inspector Danton with the proof. Hello, Inspector. Did you get the autopsy report? Yeah, I got it. That Ebenezer guy was kind of tough. Well, well, if it isn't Emma the beauty. Don't get fresh, Dandy Dandy. What did the autopsy report reveal, Inspector Dandy? Just what the newspaper said, lady. Sally Anders died of HCN poisoning. HCN? Are you sure, Inspector? Sure, I'm sure. Here it is. Right here. Death due to a dose of HCN poisoning. Traces of a mild sedative also found. By Joe, that's the answer. Answer to what? To the identity of the real murderer, Inspector. Miss Anders, may I have your handbag, please? My handbag? Whatever in the world. If you don't no. mind. No, give that back. Inspector? Yeah, I got it. Take it easy, <laughs> Let lady. Let go of me. I knew you had something to do with this, Carol Anders. Just as I thought. 
Miss Anders, have you a permit to carry this gun in your handbag? It isn't any of your business whether I have or not. So I wasn't nuts. I did hear some shots. And it was this babe who fired them. That's right, Inspector, it was. She fired them to attract our attention so we'd rush upstairs. Why? What did she want us to rush upstairs for? Tell the inspector, Miss Anders. You're so clever. You tell him, Mr. Criminologist. I'll be glad to, Miss Anders. There was someone else in the house with you, someone you didn't want us to see. Someone else? Then it must have been... Miss Anders shot her gun and screamed so that we'd rush upstairs and give that other person a chance to escape. Fine thing. So we let the murderer run out from under our noses, eh? You're so clever, Mr. Trent. On the contrary, Inspector. The other occupant of the house didn't escape. Miss Anders made that obvious when she asked me not to search the barn. I did no such thing. And so, Inspector, I think it would be a good idea if you stepped over to the barn and placed Mr. Fred Anders under arrest. Inside. Shoving me, Dan. Well, Drake, this makes your double cross 100%, doesn't it? Sit down, Anders. Miss Bemis was just about to cut one of her famous pies. Not for him, I wasn't. Oh, Fred, I'm sorry. Never mind, Carol. It was no fault of yours. Well, Drake, go ahead and make a hero out of yourself by sending an innocent man to the chair. I don't intend to send an innocent man to the chair, Anders. In fact, I don't intend to send a man to the chair at all. What do you mean by that? I mean, Miss Anders, it wasn't a man who murdered Sally Anders. It was a woman. Then it must have been, Carol. She was the only woman mixed up in the ugly business. Wait a minute, Emma, my beauty. You were around and you're a woman or you've been overacting. Oh, the idea. That's right, Inspector. Emma was around. It was she who administered the poison. See? How oh, dare you say such a thing? Oh, Bart's a great hand at saying daring things, eh, Bart? Sit still, Petunia. I mean, Emma. Anders, before you left the house on the morning of your wife's murder, did you quarrel with her? Well, well sure, yes. I'm not denying that. What are you quarreling about? Why, uh, what difference does it make? A lot. You'd been having a romance with Emma Bemis, hadn't you? Uh, well, I... Hadn't you? Uh, not really. Emma and I were just, just friendly. Sally was always nagging, and Emma and I... Fred, Fred Anders, how dare you imply oh, that stop I... stop asking I... people how they dare things. Keep quiet, You quarreled you? with your wife that morning, Anders, and left in a rage. Emma was outside listening. After a while, she came in and pretended to comfort Mrs. Anders. The two women sat down over a cup of coffee to talk the thing out. Well, of all the outlandish notions... Emma had some HCN poisoning in a vial. Now, HCN is such a bad odor and taste that only a few drops would make any amount of food unpalatable. Well, there. How could I have forced Sally to take any? By first dropping a mild sedative into her coffee, Emma, which made her drowsy. Then, pretending to revive her, you forced more coffee between her lips, coffee that contained HCN poisoning. It's a lie. It's a black lie. Then you took your own cup out to the trash barrel and disposed of it. So it would appear that Sally Anders had been drinking coffee alone. Oh, I didn't. You can't prove it. I you think can. I can prove it, Miss Bemis. It had rained the day before. On the morning of Sally Anders' murder, you worked for a while in your petunia bed. Some of the soil clung to your shoes. You left tracks near the trash barrel. Jump on, Judas. I got some of that petunia bed soil on my shoes. You are right, Inspector. You have, and we can analyze the contents and prove that... All right, you... I did it. Fred said he wouldn't marry me because of Sally, even though he hated her. So I studied up on poison. It seemed easy. I didn't think they'd blame Fred. If Drake had known about HCM. Well, Bart, here we are back at the Lamplighters Club. Mm -hmm. How about a game of chess? Mm -hmm. No, Inspector. No? What do you mean, no? We always play a game before... Come on, Mr. Drake. I'll plug it in here. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Hello. Yes, this is Barton Drake. Oh, hello, Miss Sanders. Uh-uh. What? <laughs> You've been wondering what aroused my suspicions when Emma told me she peered through the keyhole and saw Sally. Yeah, I'd like to know about that, too. Well, it was obvious she was lying, Miss Sanders. Did you ever try to peer through the keyhole of a Yale lock? Well, I'll be a... What's that? Well, that sounds very nice. Uh, 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 uh. I certainly will. You won't. Now, wait a minute, Bart. Don't forget... Keep quiet, Inspector. Yeah, but look, I'm only trying to say... Well, thank you, Miss Anders. I know I'll enjoy it. No, you won't. It'll be a bust. Oh, what a pity. He's gone. 
No, I can't do that. Uh, you see, mystery is my hobby. Welcome back. Well, I actually enjoyed this episode a lot more than usual. Uh, we didn't get the whole sort of setup scene where the characters talk a lot about a relationship, their relationships, and we got a lot more of uh, Martin Drake and Inspector Dan, and they were uh, so so funny. I I thought Danton, you know, just had some great lines, and I love the part where Martin Drake was you know, getting caught between the two women and he was trying to make the cat uh, fight effect. And when he did that, I practically lost it. And that was just the sound he made. Wow. All right. Well, uh, listen our comments and feedback now. And we have a review from Rachel uh, on the uh, Apple Podcast Store. Writes, I really like the backgrounds and histories that Adam provides. I actually heard a few of these shows uh, when in college in the 1960s, driving across the two-lane roads before the interstate highways were built. Well, thank you so much uh, for sharing that, Rachel. And I really appreciate you leaving the review. All right. Well, I want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Joey, Patreon supporter since June 2019, currently supporting us at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support. That's all for now. Join us back here uh, tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And then on Saturday, we're getting into Under Arrest. And we'll be back next Thursday, another episode of Mystery is My Hobby. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.